Um, I've got to ask first, who decided to call the band Truck and why is it called Truck? Um, I don't know. Truck was Truck was Truck before I got there. Actually, I'm a I'm a not a late comer, but um, they were already a band before I joined. Okay. Um, yeah, our sound guy Ricky was recording them in his studio, and he came came uh, came on the road and said, "Oh, Les, I've got this band in the studio. You'd love them. Oh, I reckon you know you'd think they're awesome." Blah blah blah. And anyway, they said so they had a falling out with a guitar player, and um, I got a call to help them out with gigs and things because they had this stuff booked and. But I'll, I'll jump in. Yeah, they're already on my radar, so I'll yeah. jump in and have a have a look. And um, stayed. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So is that Ricky Ray? That's Ricky Ray. Yeah. 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 Okay. So is he involved in any production side for the band? He tracked the the songs on the first record. Okay. Yeah, they're all tracked out at Ricky's studio. Yeah. Okay. Well, if, if people aren't familiar with him, he's got a bit of a huge sound. Does people like Electric Mary as well, and. All of those guys. Yeah. It's a massive sound. It's a massive sound. He's a he's a rock guy and um takes a lot of takes a lot of care with getting, you know, sonics sonic quality on on tape or yes. on pro tools. Yeah. It's a he's a modern day vintage guy, is the way I hear the hear the stuff <laughs> he puts out. He is. Well he's got a lot of vintage outboard gear and everything in his studio. It's a great, great facility. So yeah, we love being there. It's good. Mm. Cool. And now there are gonna be people that are probably going to see Truck for the first time when you're out with, you know, that other band you may be in. Um, <laughs> other band, yes. You got your side project. Um, so for the uninitiated, <laughs> who are your fellow band members? My fellow band members in Truck, uh, you may recall a fellow called Andy McLean, who was the singer in Horsehead back in the 90s. So Horsehead used to tour with Baby Animals back in the day, and we always got on great and everything like that. You know, life happens and you sort of just lose contact so um he's great man he's really good um kevin hunt this this melbourne based band um kevin hunt plays with a, a bunch of people down here as well he's uh on bass mark donaldson who comes from a jazz background in recording and performing jazz stuff is on keyboards and drummer alex deegan who was a a clinician that i used to use in my kind of uh when i did clinics and stuff bands yep. as well and, like, and the guy's a monster monster chops monster guy and it's a, just a good bunch of good bunch of guys you know and when we're, we're not really trying to reinvent the wheel we, yep. we are unashamedly classic rock yep and um it's the stuff that you know we grew up on so that's the stuff we know best yeah, yeah it's interesting that you talk about the jazz side of things because when we got to see you um last week um not only does the band like have a huge rock sound, but you can actually hear some little sneaky jazz bits on those keys. And, but also I got some really cool, cool funky kind of elements from the keys as well, where they were just weaving in and out doing their own thing. So it, it makes a lot more sense that you said that jazz background. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. This, this band can do, we could, we can do like a, a dirty rock and roll boogie if we want to. Yep. We could do like a slow blues. We could, we can do like hard, fast, kind of punky stuff. That yep. it's, it's great, and we're and we're still kind of exploring um, the different depths that that we're capable of. You know, some of the songs that we don't play live go on for ages, and they go and they go sort of you know through different sort of doorways and into different environments and things like that. And it's big, we've got the firepower to do it, so we're yeah. we're going to explore that, and we're going to keep do, you know keep doing it and see how far we can take it. Yeah. It's it's Which funny rock and roll that... crowd. Yeah. yeah. Like when I was listening to you, like whenever I hear a band for the first time, like I'd heard the stuff that was released like on YouTube and stuff like that, but it's always different yeah. when you hear a band the first time live. And I was sitting there yeah. and I was like, okay, there's some deep purple, there's some free, but then I also got a bit of like some bluesy, so like Bonamassa kind of stuff. And, you know, it's such a melting pot, but the biggest thing is the amount of force that comes from the stage. Like there's no wimpy time on that stage. It's like, it is a Mack truck. <laughs> it is a Mack truck. Yeah. It's funny when it arcs up, it's a, it's a force and it's, it's funny. It's just, you know, there's a certain chemistry every, you know, every great band has got a certain chemistry and there's something about when, when us five guys play together, 
the, the way the bits, you know, just people's approach. It's yep. um, it's really tight and it's uh, it's dynamic and yep. you know that goes from a pin drop to a roar and it's you know everything in between and yeah, it's 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 a great it's a great outlet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like the one thing that I think is missing in today's rock music is dynamics. You tend to go, oh, here's a verse, here's a bridge, oh, maybe here's a pre-chorus, here's a, and we're out, we're done. You know, we're really radio friendly. Oh. We, we sound like the next person. But when I heard you guys live, it was great because, like, I would turn to my, like to my wife, but then I'd look back because something different had already happened in the song. <laughs> and you're all, almost to the point where you'd resolved it and gone back to the original idea. So when you guys get together and write, does it come from the jam background or is everyone just bringing in individual parts and meshing it together? It's a bit of both. It's a bit of both. Sometimes Andy will come in with an idea and he's, he, he can hear the whole thing in his head. And we'll start with that. And then yeah, people will just throw, throw other bits in there. How about we take it to here or you know we need a middle eight what, what are we going to do we break it down what do we do we you know go harder or go softer or go left or go right or whatever and that's the part we we do band practice every week we don't even call it rehearsal it's like being in your first band yeah we don't even call it rehearsal we call it band practice right <laughs> and we do that like yeah once a week and so people bring in stuff or we'll just keep on chipping away at what we were working on last week because we'll you know we all record it and then it goes up on a WhatsApp so we can all reference it and all that sort of thing. And so we come back, keep chipping away at it. Um, you know, sometimes they take a little, sometimes songs take a little while. Other times they take 20 minutes. Yeah. It all depends, you know, when it's, when it's on and just go, sometimes they play themselves. Yeah. The, the big thing that was really evident when we saw you was the harmonies between all the backing vocals. Like, everyone's voice could be heard individually, but then it presented itself in a massive, huge chorus. So is that something you guys really work hard on is, is those harmonies? Be these. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 You know, if we, we, we're sort of vying for radio play and, and just to make, just to present the picture as, as good as we can. And if there's four singers in the band, then we'll all get mics and we all sit around and, We'll get together individually, um, you know, in lounge rooms and stuff like that and do BV rehearsals. They're yep. starting to go a little askew now. Well, since we've been on the road, the parts are starting to kind of, uh, I don't know, meander a little bit. But, I mean, that, maybe that's a good thing, yep. you know. It's, it's just we're you know, finding our feet, you know, like one live, especially new stuff, you know, one live run through is better than 10 rehearsals as far as, you know, what works and what doesn't. So, yeah. But okay. it's, it's good that yeah we've got we've it, they've got four backing vocalists so yep. let's or four sorry four, four vocalists three BVs yep it doesn't need to happen all the time for three BVs but when it does and everyone's got their little parts it's it's cool you know it sounds good yeah but and it it's, works well yeah. it, it worked the other night and especially in that dynamic aspect because I noticed one of the tracks you stood off mm -hmm. mic a little bit more to everyone else so your voice. And then you'd come a bit closer to the mic and you would stand back. I don't know. Maybe you were just forgetting to get there in time. Who knows? Um, <laughs> now, everything was on purpose. If you yeah. saw, um, I probably wasn't conscious, but maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just noticed that in one of the tracks, I think it was like one of the second to last track, you pulled back from the mic a little bit. And, you know, oh, and then you'd come up and it was just, you could hear, you normally hear dynamics in the way of an instrument, like the guitar building to a chorus. But whether it was deliberate, whether it was just the way it happened or the night, you could clearly hear the dynamics and it just, it remember, I remember what it was like to be like a fan of rock music because you could hear what was on the stage and it wasn't that's a tough. laptop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was, it's pretty, it's pretty damn honest. That's for sure. What, what we do. I think I recall that bit because there's a breakdown in a song called Liar. It comes out of the sort of the solo or whatever and it comes out of this big thing and then it goes in such a lie and it's almost like, you got to you got to stand right back. But you still have to do your part. Yep. And it's, a, it's a breakdown, and then it builds up then into the outro. That was chorus. the track. That's the track, right? Yep. Okay. Yes, that was on purpose. <laughs> there you go. Made it happen. <laughs> cool. um, <laughs> you mentioned radio airplay. The band fighting for radio airplay. Um, I, I'm very passionate about what I think is wrong with Australian radio. To the fact that we here actually dial in an American radio station from Las Vegas because we hear more new music on that than we'll ever hear on Triple M. 
No offense, Triple M. Um, but what uh, do you think we yes. need to do better? That's the thing. I mean, uh, in my day job in a warehouse up here, I they listen to Triple M all day, every day. And, I mean, I love the stuff that they play, but it's the same 20 songs, man. Yep. It's like it's like Pearl Jam only have daughter or, or, or alive. Yep. Or maybe Jeremy or whatever. And it's just it's just so blinkered. Uh yet, you know, they don't yeah, they they if they played some new stuff the other day, they played a Panic at the Disco song, which right. I would have thought is not in their format at all. No, no. offense, triple M. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. It's, is it machinery driven? Is it business driven? I I I hazard to think that it, it isn't artistically driven, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like the station we listen to is called KOMP from Las Vegas. So in oh, an right. hour, we we heard the new Bush song. We heard the new Hailstorm song. We had, you know, they threw a classic Foo Fighters in for shits and giggles. Um, they oh, played okay. Five Finger Death Punch. They're a Vegas band. Um, and they're a bit of Alice Cooper. Old, like, and it was just like that for an hour solid. And, you know, you have to put it with a few cheesy American ads, but all I think it's of is like... All part it, of the fun, I guess. Yeah. yeah. If that was on our radio station, I wouldn't listen to iTunes. I wouldn't listen to Spotify and have to make my own playlist because it'd be handed to me. You know, if we got a radio station like that, do you think more Aussie artists would be inclined to actually release more product? Hmm, interesting question. You'd hope so. You'd hope that, that it would be encouraged if, if there's some sort of reward for the, you know, air, airplay. I mean, the last Baby Animals song uh, tonight got a bit of a run on Triple M, yep. which you know, we're very grateful for, for about, what, a week yep. or so? Maybe they played the played the dickens out of it for maybe a week or 10 days, and then, yep. thunk, yoink, never heard of again. I, I like, remember it being on Two Play Tuesday or whatever it's called, and they did that and then backed it straight into Rush You. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so bang, bang. <laughs> Didn't even give it a chance to breathe. And, right. and it's, it's a good song. It just didn't get a it's chance to breathe. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so new single, Unconventionally Rising's out. The yes. big thing for me to find out is actually mixed by Kevin Shirley, who is just a beast. Like he's a, he's a beast. Well, we used to room together in the first, on the first Baby Animals record. You know, Kevin engineered the first Baby Animals record. Yep. So, you know, Susie had a room on her own. Eddie and Frank, the rhythm section, had their room, and it was the Dave and Cave show. Wow. So we, uh, yeah, we go way back. Yeah. What was that like to Something reconnect? Gone on to big things. Pardon? What was it like to reconnect? It was good, but, yeah, we hadn't spoken for quite a few years. And, yep. um, yeah, so we actually just had a bit of a chat about being thrown out of nightclubs in New York and, uh, you know, meeting... Uh, meeting Mick Ronson in Woodstock and just that we got up we got we had some fun and we had, we had a really good time in that in that uh, period of recording and everything so he was like sure you know I'll, I'll help you guys out no problem so I'm very busy but I'll always you know he's, he's funny he's South Africa I'll always make some room for you Dave no problem <laughs> thanks Cave so that was good so he mixed the whole um the whole truck first record right great yeah yeah. What's the time frame? It jumps out of the speakers at you too, doesn't it? Oh, That's good. Like, yeah. 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 So, this is the, the latest single. What's the time frame for future stuff? Uh, hopefully, we'll drop the rest of the record this year sometime. Yep. It's maybe September. I should know the answer to this, um, but it'll, it will be this year. We're doing, a, we're doing a record launch at the Cherry Bar in September. Yep. Album launch. So, I'm assuming it's going to be in and around there. Sure. Okay, and, and um, you're paired yeah. with Reckless, which is like the new upstart label of two not very upstart guys that have been around the block. <laughs> um, their track record already so far is amazing with what they're doing and, you know, making sure bands are paid, making sure they're looked after. What do Reckless bring to not only you as what we class as a new band, but mm. what do they bring to you in the way of history? Um, well, yeah, I, I've got a, I know Scott, uh, Crawford from Reckless, um, just because he, well, he manages baby animals and he's taken truck under his wing too, which is fantastic. Yep. You know, uh, he's just a really straight shooter, that yep. guy. He, you'll, 
you, you'll always get an answer. It might be not it might, might not be the answer that you want, but you'll get an honest and dead set straightforward answer from that guy on on any kind of dealing, you know. Yep. Which is good, and it's and it's it's rare yeah. <laughs> in this business. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm liking that sort of thing. He's very kind of tin tax. Okay, what's well, going to be this? Going to be that? You know, don't expect this to happen because it probably won't. But you know, we we can realistically do this and this and this. And we go, okay, cool, great. Because you know, we're trucks. You know, we're all about the same age. We're pretty realistic as to our you know our expectations of you know outcomes and things. So it, it's a good. I think it's a good pairing. Yeah. Yep. And the band have done a couple of like little um, video clips that obviously you're gonna you do them in the house for fun. It's not really designed from the way I view it anyway. It's not designed as anything serious. It's designed as fun. Have you got any more coming? Um, we haven't done another one. We've done one for Unconventionally Rising. Um, we'll see if there's going to be another single lifted. Um, we're pretty keen to sort of get get on recording album number two, to be quite yep. honest. Okay, um, cool. there's some really Well, you know, Liar is going to be one of the ones on that. And yep. you know, there's a whole bunch of... Uh, a whole bunch of starters for that one, which is a nice problem to have. Awesome. But yeah, these videos, man, we, they were done by mates yep. and, um, it, you know, pretty much on a shoestring budget. Um, the old sound guy from Horsehead, uh, I don't even know his real name, Spag, his name, he did the first two. Yep. And then Scotty Kingman did the Unconventionally Rising one. Wow. Oh, sorry, Cam McKenzie. Cam McKenzie from Horsehead did it. Sorry, okay. Scott. Sorry, Cam. Um, and that was, yeah, the, the whole thing is is fun. You know, it's an afternoon get together. I mean, when we did the one in for for Lucky, we did it in Kev's backyard. Yeah. We just basically had a backyard barbecue. We invited family and friends, and um, gave them all beer and snags. And the band played in the corner, and yep. kept it kept it like that. And it was a great fun afternoon. We went and did a gig that night. Right. Cool. And, and it was good fun. But the clip came across that way. The clip oh, comes good. across like as not pretentious, like it's a backyard barbecue. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing pretentious about this band, man. That's for yeah. sure. We're, you know, everyone, there's, it's like um, you got to check your ego at the door when you go into the into. You know, it's we're all in for the the, the right reason and all that sort of stuff. So it's good. Right. It's nice. You're mm. doing double duty too on some of these shows. So you'll <laughs> come out and do truck, and then you'll do BAs. Um. Is it A, is it hard to wear the different hat? And B, do you have to have a different mindset in that little quick set break? It's funny. Uh, it's not hard to wear a different hat, but it was the first couple of nights because you're you're getting off stage with a sweaty truck and you know everyone's like, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. And then and then so you go, okay, see you later, guys. <laughs> We're just going to yep. do the big different dressing room. And everyone's yep. like, it's all quiet and you know, it's a it's a funny thing. You ca it's not a come down. It's just a, a completely different dynamic. Yeah, I, I couldn't <laughs> imagine Skelton jumping from the ceiling. No, nah, Mick's pretty chill, man. <laughs> yeah, chill. we're all we're all pretty chill, especially before we go on. I mean, when we've had a good gig at the end, you know, it's yeah. You, you, beforehand, we pretty much save it until we we're on stage. Um, the approach for me as a guitar player though is completely different because yep. in truck, we uh, put it this way: in baby animals. I've, I've got to do a lot of heavy lifting in yep. guitar wise, right? Primarily a three piece. I mean, Susie plays a lot of guitar, but there's a, I, I have to fill a lot of sonic space. Mm -hmm. Whereas in truck, we got Mark playing keyboards and you know organ and piano. So my whole, yeah, my mindset is different. My whole approach to what, what I bring to it is different because I've already got an, another guy that, that, that we're not competing, but we're occupying the same yeah. sonic space. Yep. So I play differently and I play around that, you know, which is really refreshing. I love it too, you know. Yeah, it seemed like you had a different attack, like Baby Animals, it's attack. Because you, <laughs> you, you, you've got to play rhythm and lead, so to speak. Yes. Whereas in truck, while you were still aggressive, and there was a lot of space where there was, again, those dynamics, that that clarity, and then building into the, the heavy, which was like... It was really interesting to watch from where we were. We were back sort of down near the desk. So we had a nice view. And right. it was really interesting to watch that interplay where you would pull back and then come up, pull back and then come up. And because the sound in there was huge, like it was massive. 
it sounded like it. You could hear it on stage that it sounded great in the room, yeah. you know? But that's the thing. In Baby Animals, I kind of have to play all the time. Yeah. In I don't have to play all the time. Yeah. There's 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 spots where I just, you know, it's a keyboard thing, and then and then you you, you do your little embellishments or whatever, right? You, yeah. don't, you don't have to do the, the heavy lifting, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. I, I've got to ask a, a, a more more question for me this time is that <laughs> I'm going to say it was eight years ago you filled in for the Dead Daisies. Um, yes. I think you were filling in for Fortis. Yeah, and, Richie Fortis. Yeah. yeah. What, like, I know Karabi well. We're buds. Um, and I remember him saying to me it was the most bizarre run to do because we not only had to fill in for one guitar player, we had to fill in for two because you had Randall filling in for Lowy. For Lowy. Yeah, what was that? What was that experience like? Because I think you had you had Tishy on drums, who's just beast mode twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah. Um, Marco on bass, who it's weird. He just he just looks like he's just meditating on stage half the time. He like he just he zoned out. And then you had the two Aussie rock guys and Captain Jack Sparrow on vocals. Right, <laughs> was well, pretty funny. Um, well, I that I got that gig at really short notice. Actually, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was like, well, what are you doing? This is on like a, I think, a Thursday. What are you doing next week? Um, nothing. Well, can you come to Sydney because we had a couple of days to learn it, and then we're going on tour with Kiss. I'm like, yes, I'm there. Yep. So I, I did a couple of zooms with with Richie, who'd yep. um, apparently fallen off his bike or something yeah, like that. Yeah, broke his arm. Yeah, like, oh, jeez, and yeah, and he had this big guitar, and we're trying to. He's, we're going through parts and we're like, oh man, he must have been in agony, the poor bugger. Yeah. But yeah. what a great, was a, what a trip, man. It was unreal. Yeah. yeah. So cool. I, I remember walking in to shoot the show and Karabi hadn't told me anything. And, you know, I know, I know Randall from the Tats when he was playing the Tats. I didn't know you from BAs. And I looked up and I'm like, two dudes I know are playing with baby animals. What's going on? Like with um Dead Daisies, what the fuck's going on here? And then I remember... <laughs> You spotted me at one point. Randall spotted me, and Karabi's standing there staring at me because I'm not taking photos of him. All oh, right, <laughs> classic. <laughs> and we toured with them, Jim yeah. and Paul and Tommy. Actually, were really friendly, especially because they knew I was a ring in. Paul yeah. came in one time, and he's like, "And well, you know, welcome, welcome to the tour. Yeah, you know, is everything okay? Is it, if you need anything, you talk to that guy over there. Just wanted to make you know, make you welcome, and you know." Yeah, and I'm like, man, that's cool. Thanks. Like, you know, you didn't have yeah. to do that. Well, yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, think about that and then go back to what it must have been like for you touring with Van Halen back in the day. Yeah, well, that was that was a that was a dream come true, you know. I still pinch myself when I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. What what yeah. would have been yeah. one thing that you took away from Eddie and and well, Sammy was in the band still when you toured, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, what, so what was yeah. something you took away from being with them that that still stays with you today? That Edward Van Halen was that good. He was so good, man, and just would play all the time, you know. And and you just think, well, and by listening to it close up and night after night and everything like that, it's just it's otherworldly. Where he played from was other, you know, yeah. otherworldly. It's it's. Um, it's a it's goosebump material. You think, wow, man, that's it's really good. Yeah, I mean, very much his own style. You know, there was one time he was on our bus. You know, he'd had a couple, and uh, he was on the bus out the out the back, and we had him plugged into a, a Susie's telly through a rat pedal into a four track because we were riding and stuff like that. We we're trying to ride on the road, yep. and he played. He, he was playing, and it sounded just like him. Yeah, it's, like it's in the hands. It's just it's in the being. You know. Yep. He just it just. I don't know, just oozes out of him, man. I don't know, but it was just, that was that was breathtaking to see that night after night. Awesome. That's for sure. Yeah. Now we're going to finish up. Now let you get back to your dinner and my dinner and everyone else's dinner. Um, what do you want to leave people and tell them all about truck? Because there's only so much you can actually see on a www to me or on a podcast. Like it's, I saw the videos and then I saw you live and I'm like, I get it. So, what right. what do you think people need to do? Um, the truck, uh, would you could say the truck experience is five guys with nothing to lose going for it. <laughs> and we love, you know, we love what we do. We, we, uh, we love the band. We love rock and roll. 
Um, and so you, you, it's just, it's honest. You know, it speeds up, it slows down. Sometimes we skid off into the dirt on songs. You know, it's, we all cross the finish line at the same time though, thank goodness. But it's it's that, it's, you know, it's what you see is what you get. We're not trying to invent, reinvent the wheel, but we are you know, unashamedly classic rock and we're going to go for it each and every night. Awesome, man. You haven't reinvented the wheel, but you're stuck a nice lot of white walls on it. <laughs> we did stick some nice white walls on it, man. Yeah, and we've got a, we've got a, you know, pretty hotted up engine and all that sort of stuff too it's a, it's a really good band i get i'm really excited about it 